Say good evening to everyone. We uh, thank you for chiming in to the Missouri City uh, Midweek Bible Study. We pray that you have had a blessed week thus far. And uh, as always, we thank our awesome God for the opportunity to be able to open his word up again and to glean some knowledge uh, from his word. This time we're going to go to God in prayer and then we'll get into uh, what we have for tonight. Let us pray. God, we thank you once again for another day that you've given us. Thank you for uh, this week that you've allowed us to have, God, and for allowing us to make it uh, through uh, another three days of the week, God, and we're now uh, midway through the week. Uh, Lord, we don't take that for granted, and uh, we just appreciate you uh, for being who you are and for loving us uh, enough, God, to touch us with the finger of love and to continue to give us life. Uh, God, help us to uh, always be mindful that uh, there are others uh, that are worse off than we are, and we can be uh, in a, a worse condition than what we're in tonight, God. Uh, but God, we thank you for the amount of health and strength that you have given us, God. Uh, Lord, we truly, truly don't ever want to take that for granted. Uh, God, be with those that are sick, uh, that are in the hospitals right now, God, that are just struggling to survive, God, struggling to breathe, struggling to live, God. Help us to always be mindful of them and uh, to always lift up a prayer on their behalf, God. And, uh, Lord, we just come asking that you will uh, be comfort for those that are sick. And uh, if it's in your divine will to heal their bodies, God, and bring them back uh, to their full portion of health and strength, God. God, uh, uh, just continue to be with the Missouri City Church of Christ. Uh, Lord, just help us to always be a church that's striving to uh, be in your will, God, and to do your will. Uh, Lord, help us to always look to you uh, for our example, God, and uh, pray that uh, through the lives that we live, uh, we can bring some lost soul to you. God, continue to bless us, watch over us, guide us, keep us in your spirit. In Christ's name we pray this prayer. Amen. Once again, we uh, thank you for uh, tuning in and chiming in with our Bible class. And uh, we just pray that all is well with you and your household. We pray that you are staying uh, safe. We know that uh, today uh, is a historical day in the state of Texas where the uh, state has uh, been opened up to 100% capacity and uh, the mask rule has been lifted. Uh, but we pray that you all are still uh, doing your best to stay safe uh, in these uh, perilous times. And uh, we look forward to the day that we can all come back together and worship with one another. Tonight, uh, we promised you that we would do something dealing with our youth in the church. And it was uh, our prayer to have some youth here to be able to dialogue with. And we had some uh, that had committed to be here. Uh, but uh, due to uh, the lack of response and also those that just weren't able uh, to attend, uh, we decided to go another route and prayerfully uh, we'll be able to uh, invite our youth again and have some dialogue with them because we surely uh, want to hear from our young people, uh, hear where they are, uh, hear their voices, uh, get their thoughts, their uh, opinions. And so uh, that was the purpose to hear uh, from them. But Lord willing, we'll set that up again another time. And so uh, with that being said, uh, the direction uh, has shifted, although we will still uh, be dealing with uh, youth ministry and youth. Uh, it won't be what it was planned to be. So uh, if you're following along, uh, be finding First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 uh, and verse number 12 is a very familiar passage. First uh, Timothy 4 and verse number 12. And we're just going to talk tonight. Uh, on the importance of having uh, healthy youth and a healthy youth ministry. 
And so uh, we want to talk with that on, on tonight, uh, 1 Timothy 4.12. And uh, we are in transition with our youth program. Uh, we're in transition. Uh, our faithful brother, Brother Lee, uh, who did an outstanding job leading that program uh, due to uh, work and school and other uh, circumstances in, in his life, has uh, stepped down uh, from that role uh, at this point. And so we are currently in transition with our youth program, but we want to assure you that we have not forgotten our youth, nor have we overlooked our youth. In fact, we've had some meetings uh, with some others uh, that uh, have committed to stepping up to taking over the youth program. And so uh, we are in transition, and I want to deal with uh, our young people in the month of March. And perhaps uh, this discussion for many may not be what you came looking for. Uh, maybe you wanted something else and, and you know, youth is just not uh, up your alley. But I truly believe that in order for us to have a healthy church, youth are a vital part to the health of the church. And, and, and we're going to get into that. And I'm just going to read this passage, 1 Timothy 4.12, uh, very familiar. These are uh, words that uh, Paul the evangelist gives to young Timothy, Paul, who was up in age uh, at the point almost of death, uh, is now giving words to Timothy as he steps in the role of ministry. And he comes in as a young man. Uh, and uh, whether you know it or not, uh, when you study the life of Timothy, uh, the Bible uh, or uh, studies reveal that Timothy was very timid. Uh, he was a timid preacher, and Paul had to give him words of exhortation and, and encourage Paul. And Paul says this to Timothy uh, as he gets ready to step up into ministry. He says, let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Uh, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, and do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands uh, of the eldership. Uh, and so uh, Paul starts off to Timothy. He says, let no one despise your youth. In, in other words, just because you're young, just because you're a young man, you're a young preacher, he says, don't allow anyone to use your age against you. Uh, you are important, even being a young man. So that's what I want to uh, start off with and, and, and letting the church know. And if there are any young people that are watching tonight, let you know that you are important. Our youth, our young people are important and they are very vital to the health and the growth of the church. Uh, if there are no youth, if there are no young people, coming in and growing if there are no young families coming in to the body here at missouri city and growing if there are no young families and youth coming into any church what what you're experiencing then is a dying church and healthy things grow which means that if we want to be a healthy church, we must have a healthy, stable youth crowd and youth group because that shows that we are a growing church. Healthy things grow. Let me just uh, speak to uh, the growing church real quick and then I'm going to go back to dealing with our youth, which all ties in uh, together. But, but uh, we ought to want to see a growing church. We, we ought to want to see a, a growing 
uh, youth ministry, a, a growing and thriving youth group. Uh, we ought to just want to see uh, health, period, and, and growth, period, in the body here at Missouri City. In fact, there is something that God uh, put in almost all of us that longs to see small things grow into big things. Uh, ever since the beginning of time, ever since God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and commanded them in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 28 to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. In essence, God uh, put in the concept of growth. God says, man, grow the earth. In, in, in essence, he's saying that growth is a good thing. And so when we're talking about uh, our young people here and we're talking about the youth ministry here and we're talking about growing the youth ministry, that's a great thing. That's a good thing. Growth is always a good thing. It's not, it's not about being concerned with numbers. It's just that God has designed what he has given us to grow. Uh, Jesus' parable uh, of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30 it is all about being rewarded for bringing kingdom increase to that which God has entrusted us to. In Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30 that parable was all about increasing and growing. Let's just uh, go there real quick. Matthew 25 verse number 14. Matthew 25, verse 14, the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country uh, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. To one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord uh, of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents and look I have gained five more talents besides them his Lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of our Lord the one that received two talents came and said Lord you delivered to me two talents and I have gained two more talents and the servant said once again well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things and then the one who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. And his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. In essence, what this parable, as I'm telling you, what was teaching is that the master was expecting there to be some growth from the talent that they had received. In, in essence, growth is very vital. Growth is very healthy. And so when we're dealing with growth in the church and we're dealing with uh, growth in the youth ministry, that's very important and vital to the church here. That shows that we have a church that is healthy. When we see young people coming in the church, young people are, are growing, is showing that we have a church that is healthy. And so what I'm saying to us on tonight is I, I want to see our youth ministry grow. But not just the youth ministry, but I want to see the church as a, as a whole grow because healthy things grow. 
Uh, here's here's a, a deep uh, cosmic truth for you. Uh, when, when a living thing becomes unhealthy, growth stops, and then it even reverses. You just ask any uh, gardener or, or, or farmer that, that when a living thing becomes unhealthy, that means that it has stopped growing, and sometimes it starts reversing. And it becomes smaller and smaller and, 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 and you see that there is no growth, with, which means that it has become unhealthy. If we stop focusing on our young people here in the church, if we stop focusing on our youth and we put focus on everything else, what you're going to encounter is an unhealthy church. And what you're going to eventually encounter is a church that is on its way to the graveyard. If we're not growing youth spiritually, if we're not uh, focusing our attention on our young people, where do you think the church will be when we fall off? And so that's why it's so vital and important that we put much emphasis, and I know we don't talk about uh, our, our youth much, but, but I think it's very important that we start talking about our young people and our youth group and our youth ministry more, and we start seeing them more and involving them more. Because if we don't, what we'll start seeing in the churches is a decline. L listen to uh, Jesus in Matthew 13, just dealing with growth, I'm first dealing with growth, and then I'm going to talk about uh, our youth. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. This is dealing with the parable of the sower. The Bible says, Then he spoke many things to them in parable, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Uh, then the Bible says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, <clears throat> in that parable, Jesus was speaking metaphorically of the human heart. And how the spiritual fruit bearing nature of God's word tends to either prosper or decline depending upon the conditions of the soil. And the soil uh, is dealing with the conditions of the heart into which the seed or the word of God falls. And so Jesus chooses this metaphor because it is understood universally that growth is always connected to health. Growth is always connected to health. And so we must have a growing youth ministry here at Missouri City if we want to see a healthy church, we must continue bringing in young people and having a strong youth program, youth ministry going for our young people because that's what helps the church to grow. We, we must have a healthy youth program that cannot be overlooked here at uh, Missouri City. And let, let, let me give you some perspective about who we are ministering to and the time in history 
that we are ministering to these young people. Currently, we are ministering to Generation Z, also known as the digital or the I generation. The bottom half of the millennials, my generation, millennial generation, and Generation Z is the largest generation in history and the first generation in America to grow up in a completely post-Christian culture. Let me say that again. This is why I'm talking about us having a strong youth program. This is what I'm talking about. Let me say it again. My generation and Generation Z is the largest generation in history and the first generation in America to grow up in a completely post-Christian culture, which in essence means that Christianity is no longer the dominant religion for this generation. Now, you know, they, they uh, in some respects, respect Christianity, but there are also other ways that this generation looks to worship. You know, they don't feel that, man, look, uh, Christianity is the only way. We don't have to come to church to worship our God. And, 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 and you know, there are so many other uh, religions out there now that capture our attention. Uh, there, in, in essence, man, our, our young people, uh, this generation doesn't necessarily take what we give from the Bible as being the source. Because there are so many other religions out there as i just told you we are in the generation of technology generation z is known as the digital and the i generation they are known as the generation of technology everything that they learn they learn from technology they learn from social media platform forms they, they, they learn from facebook from instagram from Twitter, from YouTube, that they, they can get on all of these things and you can look up anything nowadays. Anything concerning religion, you can look up and it's out there. It's out there on Instagram, it's out there on Facebook, it's out there on YouTube. It's all kinds of social media sites that our young people are connected to where they learn about religion. TikTok, TikTok and, and, and Kick and, and all of these social media platforms and there are so many religious theories out there now. There are so many different religions out there now that are believable. You know, you, you get on some of these videos, it, look, if, 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 if I didn't know the word of God and I listen to some of these uh, uh, videos about religion and, and about Islam and, and, and about all of these other different uh, uh, religions that are out there if I didn't know the word of God man it would be easy for me to be swayed and, and, and persuaded to go in another direction but, but this is how our young people are learning nowadays you know, they're, they're, they're picking up man their, their knowledge about religion and about God from all of these videos that surface they go off to schools and professors are teaching uh, different theories uh, about God and, and about how we were created and, and about, man, the universe and, and about there not being a God. It, it, it's so much that, that our young people are, are tapping into now that if the church doesn't have a solid program, if the church is not invested in our youth, if we're not educating our youth, if we're not training our young people, 
if we're not fellowshipping with our young people, if we're not discipling our young people, if we're not worshiping with our young people, if we're not building them and, and growing them and encouraging them and studying the word with them, and we're not keeping up with the times, we're going to lose them. And, and, and so this is why it's so important for us to talk about having a solid youth program here at Missouri City because we know what we're up against. And, and so therefore, we, we can't afford to say, well, you know, uh, yeah, when we have a chance, we'll get to them. You know, uh, I know we have youth here, but, you know, it, it's so many other things that are more important to deal with. No, no, that, no that's not true. Because if we don't capture our young people now, if we don't have solid programs and solid teaching and, and, and solid discipling for them now, the church is going to suffer. Dur during the last couple of decades, the church has endured large waves of cultural change. The church today finds itself in a new context, which means that ministry to Generation Z is different and more difficult. And, and being that that's the case, our youth ministries cannot afford to suffer. Ministry today looks much different than it did, or rather religion today looks much different than it did when I was growing up. You know, I, I want you to think about, think about what our youth are facing today. Our young people face questions which many of our generations never had to deal with or wrestle with before. Questions such as, am I male or am I female? I identity crisis. Who am I? And so, you know, in yesteryears, you know, ba basically the, the topic was dealing with the church, <laughs> the church, the church, the one church and, you know, the one body. Uh, but today we, we have to deal with identity issues. Do I identify as a male or as a female? We, we, we have to deal with Jesus. Is Jesus real? Is Jesus really Christ? Does God really exist? Uh, our young people deal with social media every day, and, and, uh, and oftentimes they have to deal with identity crisis on social media, bullying, which, which leads to high levels of, of suicide. Uh, our youth are, are facing so many different challenges that if we don't address them in the church, we're going to lose them. The teens face many new challenges that, that some of us adults who are of a different generation are not aware of and we never had to ever face. And, and so what I'm saying is it is a must. I'm just talking to us tonight. It, it is a must that we have uh, solid programs that hit those, those needs. And that's why uh, at this point in time, Missouri City is, is seeking, is seeking to build a stronger program. We've had a strong program for many years, but now we're seeking to build it and make it even stronger so that we can be sure to reach our young people. And, and let me tell you something. What that means is we must deal with the uncomfortable topics. And when we deal with those uncomfortable topics, we must be willing to deal with them with open minds. We must be willing to listen to our youth when they come with different issues and, and, and different ideologies and, and, and different thoughts. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, the youth of today, they're not just going to take, you know, 
this is how it is and, and, and this is what, what it's going to be. No, they're going to question stuff. <laughs> you you, you, you got to show that to me. You, you, you've got to prove it. And sometimes even when you prove it, you better find somewhere else to prove it a, as well. Because they're not just going to take this is what I've heard and this is what I've been taught. You, you got to prove it. And so what I'm saying is when, when we address these topics with our young people, we've got to address them with open minds. Be willing to hear them. Be willing to listen to them. Be willing to say, well, man, you know what? You have a valid point. Maybe I looked at that thing wrong. Uh, we, we've got to cover topics. And, and, and let me say this. Uh, a survey was, was taken uh, amongst, uh, in particular, millennials, you know, asking uh, why, why they are not uh, coming to church regularly, why you don't see the church uh, as being important uh, anymore. And, and this is what the young people said. And this is what this generation says right now. They said, because nobody's listening to us. We're tired of you blaming the culture for every bad thing in life. We want to feel valued. Here's what they said. And this is what I'm talking about. We want you to talk to us about controversial issues because no one in the church is. We want to hear subjects on career and education and relationships, marriage, sex, finances, children, purpose, chemicals, body images. Uh, we would like for the church to create real and relevant spaces for young adults to learn to grow and to be vulnerable. They, they say, man, look, we want the church to stop talking about us unless you're actually going to do something. And, and so when I talk about reaching our youth, I, I talk about reaching our, our young people, what that means is we got to have a Peter mentality. Remember Peter in Matthew chapter 14? Peter and the disciples were, were out traveling on the sea. And uh, the Bible says that as they were traveling, Peter looks out and in the midst of the water, this storm arises and there Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter thought that it was a ghost. And Jesus tells Peter, look, no, man, don't be afraid. It is I. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, bid me to walk on the water. And Jesus told Peter, man, all right, step out. And Peter did just that. He stepped out of the boat. In essence, what Peter did was he stepped out of his comfort zone. And if we're going to reach our young people, that means sometimes having to step out of our comfort zone. That, that, that means dealing with those subjects that may be uncomfortable to touch on, but they're needed. We, we, we have to cover topics such as the LGBT community. We, we, we have to deal with topics dealing with identity and, and, and dealing with suicide and dealing with drugs and dealing with weed, which is known as the plant from the earth, dealing, dealing with chemicals, drinking, addiction, fornication, body piercings and tattoos, teenage pregnancies, abortions, responsibilities, Christianity, Islam, the apocryphal books, also known as the lost books. We have to deal with issues such as hair, dreadlocks. Uh, is it wrong? Is it right for a man to wear dreadlocks, to wear long hair? A and deal with those topics honestly, 
Not, not based on what we heard from yesteryears, but based on it contextually. Deal with those topics that may be tough to deal with. But this is what young people said, man, we need to hear. This, this, this is what we're dealing with. We, we need the church to be relevant. We, we've got to deal with the culture and, and not be afraid to touch on the culture. We, we, we've got to be relevant with our young people. And what I'm saying is the church cannot afford to be looked at anymore as an organization that believes in beating up on our youth, pointing out their faults, their mistakes, and ignoring the fact that they're here. We must connect. We must be concerned for our youth. As Brother Phillips and as Brother Lee have done, we must make them our business. Be willing to adopt a youth. Spend time with them. Hear about their issues. Hear where they are in life. Make them your business. We must have a strong youth ministry for our young people. We must be concerned about them. We must develop programs for them. We, 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 we should have tutoring for our young people. I, I would love for us one day to, to have a computer center where we can teach our young people uh, how to type on computers and, and, and about computer programs and have programs uh, on our computers where our young people can learn. I, I, I would love for that to happen. W what I'm saying is we've got to be willing to invest into our young people, include them as much as we can, include them in all that we do in our worship services. Hear their voice. Let, let them speak. Let's let our young people at Missouri City know that, man, we truly care. We, we, we are concerned. We love you. We, man, we, we've been in a, in a pandemic now for a whole year. You know, mentally, our, our young people may not be where they need to be mentally. We need to hear uh, about the issues that they're having. Mentally for them, it, it, it could have been, it may have been challenging to be out of school for a whole year. Friends perhaps got sick with the virus and perhaps they saw friends dying. We need to hear their needs. And, and, and we, we can't. We can't brush them off. This goes back to what I started with. 1 Timothy 4.12, let no one despise your youth. We, we can't brush them off and say, child, you know, you're too young to have that many problems. Young people have problems. Young, young people deal with stuff that we never thought we would have to deal with. They come from broken homes. Young people are dealing with all kinds of things on social media. And so what I'm saying is we cannot have the mentality that says hey, keep on living. Wait till you get to my age. You'll really find out what problems are. No, no, we have to be willing to say, man, baby, let me hear you. Talk to me. What can we do? How can we have a, a strong program, man, that reaches y'all where y'all are able to just Talk with one another. Talk with us. And we hear your pain. We help grow you. We help mature you. We show you that we love you and care for you. That, that's all I'm saying. And that's what we are in the process of doing right now. But what I'm saying is, is that we need the entire body of Missouri City to help us make the dream work. We need the entire body at Missouri City as our theme is this year to help us realize our dream, to build a strong program. That, that, that's, that's what we need. We, we, we need you all to, to help build a strong program. And, and what we're not trying to do is build a program full of hype, but not health. We, we, we don't want a program that's full of hype but not health. In, in, in essence, uh, we're, we're building a program that has all of these 
you know, activities that, that hype you up and that are fun. And, and, and man, you know, uh, man, this, we have a, a full calendar of, of fun activities, but, but it's not healthy. Because it's not built off of any biblical fundamental principles. No, no, we want to have a program that, first of all, is built off of spiritual principles. We're not just concerned with trying to have so many activities, fun activities, that, that our young people aren't growing spiritually. And, and so what I'm saying is that what we need is for the entire church to help us to realize the dream. And so what I'm asking uh, from, first of all, uh, our young people and their parents, here's what I'm asking. Send in to us what you would like to see out of your youth program. All right. And see, this is, this is the youth program. And so before we strive to try and structure and build a program up, I think that first what you all need to do as youth is send in to us, email us, send it in to, to uh, Sister Crystal, and she'll be sure that we get it. Even tonight, if you're on Facebook and you want to text in, type in uh, on our Facebook, you know, some of the things that you would like to see out of your youth program, send that in. Because we want to make sure that we structure this youth program to the needs of our young people and not what we think you need. <laughs> but you tell us what you need. And then from there, we will continue to structure it some more. Parents. Send in to us what you feel would be good for your youth. Send that in. Email us. Type it into our, our comments tonight and we'll be sure to get that so we can start structuring this program and, and building a strong youth program here at Missouri City. Church members, maybe you have some thoughts and ideas. We're not close. Send in your thoughts on, on what you think would help create a, a strong vibrant youth program here at Missouri City we want our youth to know that you are loved we, we want you to know that we hear you we see you we're concerned about you we need to address and we want to and we're going to address your issues we're going to be relevant we're going to hit on those hard Topics that may be hard to deal with in a church setting, but we're going to do that because we want this to be a strong church. And we want our program, our youth program, to be one of the strongest youth programs that we have. But our most important concern is being sure that we grow our youth spiritually to know God. And for that to happen, we've got to make sure we've put in the time with our youth. That, that's my lesson tonight. I just want to encourage us, as, as Brother Phillips and Brother Lee have put in place, to truly make it our business to know our youth. As we're striving to build a, a stronger youth program, we are encouraging you to send in your thoughts, your ideas on what you think will help make a healthy youth program. To help make it grow. To, to help keep our young people on the right track. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to do. And I'm telling you now, that's what we're going to do with the help of God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, to our young people, we want you to know we're praying for you. Lord willing, we're going to hear from you soon. Uh, probably what we'll do uh, with our youth and the dialogue is uh, a Zoom. We'll uh, record it and then uh, we'll put it out there, the dialogue that we do with our young people. So you can hear uh, not just from me, but you can actually hear from the youth uh, in this church. Uh, may God bless you all and may God
keep you. I'm going to uh, give the announcements. And uh, the first announcement, I want to remind everyone of our Zoom classes that will be taking place this week. Uh, once again, uh, we have the Sisters Gaining Freedom Book Club. And that will be this Saturday the 13th at 10 a.m. And you'll be discussing uh, chapter 6 through chapter 10 uh, of the book that you all have started. Uh, the Sisters Gaining Freedom uh, Book Club. And then uh, also, let me pull this announcement up real quick. We have uh, Tech Talk with uh, Brother uh, Glenn Bolden. And that will be this coming uh, Thursday, tomorrow at 6.30. Tech Talk with Brother Glenn Bolden, tomorrow at 6.30. And the topic is uh, Cutting the Cord, dealing with cable TV, Cutting the Cord. And so uh, that will be a very interesting topic. And so if you would like to uh, hear that topic, please connect with Brother Glenn Bowden dealing with cutting the cord uh, tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Also, uh, Brother uh, Bowden is asking that uh, if there are any topics uh, that you would like to have discussed uh, on Tech Talk, please uh, email those in to Sister Crystal, and uh, he'll be sure to cover uh, whatever topics that you may have concerning technology. So if you have any topics topics uh, that you would like to uh, have discussed on technology, please email those in uh, to Sister Crystal, and then Brother uh, Bowden will be sure to cover those uh, on his Tech Talk sessions. Uh, for all of our Zoom classes, uh, please remember that the meeting access links are located on our website. I also want to remind you of the prayer line uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, if you're in need of prayer, uh, please connect to our prayer line tomorrow at 8 p.m. And they'll be sure to uh, pray for you and also give you a word of encouragement. I uh, want to remind you also of the construction uh, that's taking place here uh, at our facility. Uh, we are uh, redoing our auditorium and uh, bathrooms and foyer. Uh, all of that is being done. And so please continue to pray for that work. Uh, pray that God uh, blesses it. And uh, also, uh, if you would like to uh, sow into uh, our building uh, project, uh, you may uh, on our Alexio uh, giving, uh, giving link. Uh, you can go there and uh, click in the building funds and uh, be willing to be able rather to submit uh, whatever you would like to give uh, to our building. Those are the announcements that I have at this time. Uh, we will go into our prayer requests and then we'll have our closing prayer. Uh, I do know that um, on our Facebook, Sister Estelle uh, sent in a prayer uh, this past Sunday that she was uh, in the hospital battling with COVID-19. Uh, and so uh, we ask that you lift her up in prayer uh, as she's uh, dealing with COVID-19. And also uh, she asks prayers for herself as she's also uh, dealing with cancer and getting ready to uh, go through chemotherapy treatments. So uh, please keep Sister Estelle uh, lifted up uh, in prayer. And then we have some more uh, prayer requests that have come in. Sister Leslie uh, Wadi is asking prayers uh, for herself. And so uh, we want to keep her lifted up. Uh, Brother Alvin Williams is asking prayers for uh, his health. Uh, he's having some health concerns uh, at this time. And so uh, we want to lift him up in prayer that God will heal his body. Also, Sister Sharon Jenkins uh, is asking prayers for herself and her family uh, in the loss of her mother. Uh, Sister Sharon Jenkins lost her mother uh, last week, and uh, we definitely want to keep her lifted up in prayer as they are dealing with that loss. 
Uh, those are the requests that we have uh, tonight, and uh, we pray that you all have a blessed week. And if we missed any uh, prayers, uh, prayer requests, we will have a general prayer for those that we may have missed. At this time, let us pray. God, we come to you. We thank you for this evening that you blessed us with and uh, allowing us to just deal with our young people in the church right now, God. Lord, be with us as we are uh, striving to strengthen our youth program, God, and uh, reach our young people where they are, God. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, for those that have worked with this ministry for so many years, God, and have led our youth uh, in a positive direction, God. And uh, be with us now as we are in the midst of transition and we're looking to uh, build the program uh, from where uh, it has already grown, God. Help us to just continue to grow from there and build an even stronger program, God, and reach uh, the needs of our young people, God, so that they can uh, grow up uh, knowing you and uh, wanting to follow you all of the days of their lives, God. Uh, Lord, we ask that you will be with the parents uh, who have the challenge of trying to raise uh, these young people in these difficult times, God, having to deal with uh, technology, God, and deal with the television and the radio and, and all of the different distractions that are in the world to, to try and get our young people off track, God. Uh, Lord, so just be with those parents, God, that they can continue to look to you and see you, God, and be able to uh, rear and raise their children uh, to know you, God, and then be with the church that we do our part uh, to help guide and direct our young people. Lord, in the, in, in the right direction. God, be with those that uh, sent in requests tonight. God, be with Sister uh, Steele, Lord, who uh, is in the hospital right now dealing with COVID-19 and also uh, dealing with cancer, God. Uh, Lord, we just come asking that uh, you will please, please touch her with the finger of your love and heal her body, God. And bring her back to her full health and strength, God, and uh, be with her family, uh, Lord, that you will strengthen them, God, and uh, help them to be a source of encouragement for her uh, during these difficult days. Uh, God, just continue to uh, be with Sister Wadi, God, who sent in a, re a request for herself. Lord, you know what's going on in, in her life, God, and uh, you know what she's in need of. And so we just come asking that if it's in your will, uh, that you will answer her request. God, we come to you uh, on behalf of Sister, uh, uh, Sister Jeanette, God, or rather Sister Jenkins, uh, who lost uh, her mother this past week. God, be with her, Lord. Uh, we know that it's never easy uh, losing a loved one, uh, especially losing a parent, God. And so, Lord, uh, we just thank you for the life uh, that her mother lived, God, and uh, given her uh, time to be with her mother, God, and to just enjoy uh, those years, God, of, of a great prosperous life, God. But now we just come asking that you will be her comfort and strength, God, uh, during this time. Uh, Lord, help her to know that you have not left her nor forsaken her, uh, but you're right there with her, carrying her through uh, this storm, God. Uh, Lord, just continue to uh, be with Sister Jenkins, God, and we just thank you for her strength. Thank you for her love that she has for you. And then, God, we come to you on behalf of Brother Alvin Williams, who asks prayers for himself uh, as he has some health issues, God. Please heal his body, God, and bring him back to his full uh, health and strength if it's in your will. Uh, God, just continue to uh, bless him, God, and be with his family and watch over him. Be with all of those, God, who may have had requests, God, and uh, just weren't able to get them in or just uh, did not send them in, God. Lord, you know uh, what's on their hearts. You know what they're in need of. And we know that you are a God that's more than able to answer their requests. So, God, please uh, answer their requests, God, and uh, just be with them, Lord. Be, be with uh, the Missouri City Church, God. Uh, help us to... 
uh, get to a point where we're able to once again worship with one another, God, and uh, be able to fellowship with one another and see one another again, Lord. Uh, we look forward to that day. Uh, God, be with us as we are in the midst of this building project. Uh, Lord, help us uh, to continue to strive to do your will, God. Uh, be with the project, God, that all things will be successful, God, and that uh, we will get all of the funds that we need to be able to take care uh, of seeing this project through. Lord, bless us, watch over us, guide us, and keep us in your spirit. In Christ's name we pray this prayer. Amen. Look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday, Lord willing, at 10 a.m. May God bless you and may God keep you.